exercise four. In this exercise, we're going to look at how to generate a, a couple different Revolve features as well as a Sweep feature inside ViaCAD. And when we're finished, we'll have something that looks like this. So to begin, let's start with a new part file. the, the um, Concept Explorer and the Object Info and Snaps over to the side there. Okay, and so from here we could go ahead and we first begin by selecting the Rectangle tool. And we want the single line rectangle and we're going to go ahead and click down below here and we want to make it 3 by 1 inch. So we could actually just kind of conceptualize it there on the screen, and then we could come back here and actually plug in the, the numbers. All right, the next thing we have to do is we gotta, we're going to go ahead and use the chamfer tool. Now there's chamfer to two lines and chamfer angle. We'll go with chamfer angle, 0.25 for the length and 45 degrees. Just select where the chamfer belongs and it will automatically, automatically trim it up for you. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a center point circle located right about in this area here. And the diameter of that is going to be 1 inch. And it's going to be located approximately 1.75 in the Z and minus 6.5. Minus 0.65 and hit enter. If it makes a second copy, that's okay. Just click on the original one and hit delete. And now we could use the trim tool. To trim this, just go ahead and select the line you want it to trim up to and then click on what you don't want. Then, floating out here in space, right click and find deselect. Now select what's left of the arc and what you want to trim away. And there it is. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lathe solid. So we select lathe solid, surround the geometry, and then click on the axis of revolution, which would be this edge right here. Okay, the next step is we want to go ahead and add a feature. Uh, in, in this case, we want to add a spoke. So we'll go to view, and we'll look at the top view. We'll go to work plane and turn on show grid so we can see the actual grid here. And it's maybe not a bad idea to go to wireframe. So down below here we could click on wireframe and now we could go ahead and select our line tool and right about uh, in this vicinity go ahead and click and drag out a line. Now go ahead and plug in the numbers. The length should be 2 inches and the Y should be 1.75. And now go ahead and off of that, drag off a 45 degree angle and make that one inch long. And then from there, drag off another line along the X and make sure that's one inch long. Now we could go to the fillet tool over here. We click on this and we have sketched fillet, the fillet two lines. And the radius should be set to one inch. Just click on the two lines there and then click on these two lines. And we could rotate it now. And we could go back to shade if we'd like. All right, the next step is we want to go ahead and build something that looks kind of like a tombstone on the end here. But we need to bring our plane along there. So we could go to Work Plane and Set Origin. Once you select Set Origin, select the endpoint. Uh, actually, uh, let's rotate this. We will now go ahead and select side. And now you can see we're actually sketching on the end there. So from here, let's zoom up, select the circle tool, and right at the end point, drag out a circle. And the circle should be uh, 0.7. And then go ahead and take the line tool and find the quadrant click and drag straight down and that's going to be a length of uh, seven uh, I'm sorry point seven five and 
and then you could find the quadrant over here, vertex, and if you want to align yourself to the other one, just simply move the pointer over there, don't release the mouse button yet, and then once you see it align and it intersect, you could go ahead and close that up. And now we could just go to the trim tool. Uh, before you select anything, just right click to deselect, make sure you don't have anything additional selected. And now we could go ahead and hold the shift key and select both of these lines and then click on what we don't want. And now we're ready to go ahead and sweep this. Now for the sweep tool, we click on this here and we'll find sweep, a one rail sweep solid. Select that and then sweep in place and curve extends is fine. Uh, we won't adjust anything there, but just right, not left, but right mouse button click on one of the edges of the tombstone and find select chain. Okay. Now go ahead and right click on any one of the curves here and do the same thing, select chain again. And there is our spoke. Now we just need to pattern that. So let's go back to work plane and reset it back to global. And now from here, we could go ahead and we're going to select, uh, actually work plane, you want to set it to top, um, not top, so it's a front. And now we could go to polar duplicates. The way, reason we set it to top, or to front actually for the work plane is because when we make a polar uh, pattern here, we need that plane in alignment in this way. So we select polar duplicates, select the object we want to duplicate, and here's actually not maybe a bad idea to go to wireframe. So you could select the center line that's right in the middle here. So we could click on that. And then we should be able to just go ahead and make sure it's set to three. And you want associative du duplicates. So if anything changes, they'll all update. And now if we go to shaded mode, we should now have them spread out. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and unite these because they're separate. If we go to wireframe, you can see they're, they're not connected properly yet. So over here we go to Add Solid. Select the hub, which is in the center first, and then go ahead and select the other entities. So go ahead and select the hub again, select this one, and select the hub again, and this one. You can actually hold Control and select multiple solids too. And now you can see that they're all one. Then go to the Selection button to return back. Okay. Uh, one additional thing that I should have done actually before I went ahead and did that is maybe put fillets on, but we could do that now. We'll just go to the, the fillet tool, blend, set it to 0 0.125, and go ahead and select these edges. And now you should be able to select this face, and that will blend those as such. Okay, now let's go ahead and we're going to go back to work plane and set it to global, and go to view and set it to top. The next step here is we need to make the hand wheel on the outside. So we go to the center point circle. Locate this edge here till you find the midpoint. Click and drag out a circle, and the diameter here should be 1.5. Okay, and now you'll see it actually locked it in, not on the plane, but uh, on the surface here, and we want it on that plane. So that's easy enough to fix. And the Z here, just set it to zero. Bef while it's actually while this entity is still selected. So hit, hit the escape key or hit this button here, selection, select the circle and set the Z to zero. And now you'll see that it dropped it on our plane because we're working in Cartesian coordinates there. And now we could go ahead and we could revolve that. So we go over here to lathe solid, select a, uh, a line for the lathe solid. This is where maybe a um, wireframe display might be easier to see. And there's we could use the one that's in there already and then return back to shaded mode and there is our hand wheel 
Now let's go ahead and unite that. Over here we do Boolean Add Solid, select the hub, and then select the outside. Okay. Go to Fillet and just select the whole face to add fillets in between everything. All right, if you want to turn off your grid, you could do that now. We could go to Work Plane and turn off Show Grid. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and I want to show you the whole tool in here. So we go over here, find the whole feature, select whole feature, and make sure it's set to counterbore. And we want it set to depth here. And the depth is going to be one inch. And the diameter, make sure it's one inch. And the counterboard depth, we'll leave it at 0.25, and the bore will be one, uh, we'll actually make two inches. Now select this face where you want to drop it, and then click the center here. And then you could go ahead and hit the selection tool. And actually, I believe my, uh, let me, I believe I actually put that in incorrectly on my board depth. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to select that model. And I'm going to go over here and hit the little plus symbol, and we should be able to find the hole down at the bottom. So just click on it in the feature tree, and then go to data, and here we have the depth, the diameter, and apparently the depth, let's go ahead and make that deeper. So we'll actually change that to 2 inches. Uh, apparently, um, Okay, I see what's happening. All right, apparently I just went ahead and incorrectly put in the wrong value. So if we want to get rid of that, we could just edit, undo, and find it on the feature tree. And let's just delete it. You can edit it. Make sure when you delete something off of the feature tree, you right click on it and select remove feature. Otherwise, it will actually take the whole model. So you got to be careful of that. Let's go back there. Okay, and the, the bore actually is set too large. That was my mistake. Set that to 1 inch. The bore depth, 0.25. The diameter will set to 0.5. Now we should be able to select that face. And there we go. It's a counter bore. All right, save it off as E3, and you are finished.